At first, objects seem scary, but once you learn how to use them, you will love them. In V1, objects very much exist, but aren't used in places where they make a lot of sense to be in. For example, V1 has this janky global variable error level that gets updated by many commands. You used to have to use it to check what a command returns. Well, psych! Commands don't return anything, and error level can technically change at any moment. Often, you actually had to save error level to a temporary variable to check the value later. Why would we need a middleman now? Wouldn't it be better if the command just returned the value we want? Well, yes, and v2 does exactly that. As you may already know, v2 replaced all commands with functions and removed the need for error level by just returning the value. That's exactly where objects come in. For functions that return multiple values, we got a nice bundle of them. We can use the object that's returned to have the cake and eat it. Let's have a look at GUIs. In v1, they occupied the global space and were an overall pain in the ass to contain. We call the ID of the GUI and then do whatever with it. In v2, you don't have to deal with that. GUIs are object-oriented. You can easily have a GUI in a function and overall have as many GUIs as you want in a single script without any hassle. That's because you get the object of the GUI and then operate on that object. You won't need to worry about affecting some other GUI in any way. Object is actually a really broad abstraction. Arrays are objects and so are maps, and both of them have their own properties and methods. Now hold on Axel Fubler, if that's even your real name, what are properties and methods? The difference is actually really simple. I laughed my ass off when I learned it. Here I'm using a variable and calling a function. Now now I'm using a property and calling a method. Yes, the only difference between a normal variable and a property, a function and a method, is belonging. Properties and methods belong to something, like a class or an object. And to refer to a property or method, you first have to access the object. Alright, let's create our own object. The proper method to create an object is to call its function. But we don't actually need to, because we can instead use curly brackets to reach the same effect. To create a property, you name it literally. It might look like it's a variable, but this is actually seen more or less as a string. Then add a colon with an optional space and specify your value. To declare more than one property, you have to separate them with commas. And since HK has such a clear separator, you can format the property declarations as you want. All on a single line, one true brace style, on multiple lines, or any other formatting choice. White space doesn't matter. That's because instead of relying on new lines, we have a bunch of expressions separated by commas and brackets. Brackets are what contains the property definitions, and commas are what separates them. This idea is pretty much the same for normal brackets in arrow functions. I go into more detail of statement versus expression in my tutorial on them. Talking about arrow functions, let's declare a method now. The key declaration is the same. What's different is the function definition. We can't declare a function as normal, because as I said before, the value expects an expression. And to add, even though we're declaring a function, there would be nothing to tell HK that it's that function we want to call. So we should declare the function elsewhere and get its function object as the value to the key. Yes, we need a function object, so we can also declare an inline function using arrow syntax or using a bind. More on function objects in my tutorial on them and in the mentioned tutorial on arrow functions. Now when we access the object, we can call the value, which is actually a function object, which can be called. Boom, we call the method we declared. How useful it is to declare a method like this is up to you to decide. But this is an interesting insight to how methods work in AHK overall. Even in classes, this is actually how methods work behind the scenes, more or less. If I'm wrong, please feel free to generate free content for me in the comments by explaining why I'm wrong. Right now, I'm gonna show you the biggest use for objects, aside from arrays, GUIs, and the like. Say you have a function with multiple variables, and you want to return some or all of them. That's very easy to do with objects. Now, when you call the function, it will return an object instead of a single variable. And then, you can use the values returned using the same keys as the ones you defined in the object. 
You can use the same trick with arrays, but keep in mind this looks far less readable. See how now you actually have to figure out what those variables are supposed to be? Not a problem with objects, but returning an array very much has a place to be, just probably not to use directly like this. Here's another way you can use objects. Say there's a bunch of variables that all relate to one theme you want to make clear. This exact situation might sway you to the example on the right, but in more realistic situations, Having an object might actually be quite nicer for clarity. I have to warn you though, variables are faster than objects. On the other hand, you're using AHK, so speed isn't really a concern now, is it? Plus, readability is far more valuable than a few milliseconds, if not nanoseconds. Feel free to have your pick depending on the situation. That's about it for the introduction on objects. Thank you for watching and have a nice day. There's one small thing I want to show you outside of the theme of the video. Usually, my test script would look like this, with all the numerous directives. In this video though, all of them were folded. How? There are no brackets or block comments to fold. The latest version of VS Code lets you create your own folding sections. First, you select what you want to fold. Press Ctrl Shift P and type in Manual Folding Range. Now what you selected can be folded and unfolded. These folding sections don't disappear after you close VS Code, and you can't make an inline folding section, only full lines. Bye bye!